What's up, savvy expats? The Philippines is the highest internet consuming country in the entire world, with the average Filipino spending 11 hours on social media every day. But despite that, this archipelago has some of the slowest internet speeds globally, second slowest in the entire world to be exact. No wonder why Filipinos spend so much time online, because half their time is spent waiting for everything to load. But that can come to a change with Starlink recently being introduced in the Philippines none other by the man himself, Elon Musk. So how will Starlink affect the Philippines, how much does it cost to register, and how fast exactly are these promising internet speeds? We're going to get all these questions answered for you in this video, so without further ado, let's dive in. So we start with the question, what exactly is Starlink? Essentially, Starlink is an internet service provider developed by the brainchild of Elon Musk, SpaceX. This revolutionary product was launched in the Philippines of February 22nd of this year of 2023 and it's quote unquote the world's most advanced broadband satellite internet provider. And its main objective is to provide connectivity to remote countries that didn't previously have accessibility to internet. And so, what better country than the Philippines, right? Starlink is projected to be a revolutionary project set to transform global connectivity as we see it today. And so, Starlink proposes to deliver high-speed internet connection to even the most remote regions on Earth via a constellation of thousands of tiny satellites orbiting the Earth. It seems to me that there's no better company to pull this off than SpaceX. According to their website, Starlink is the world's first and largest satellite constellation using a low Earth orbit to deliver broadband internet capable of supporting streaming, online gaming, video calls, and more. Leveraging advanced satellites and user hardware coupled with our deep experience with both spacecraft and on-orbit operations, Starlink delivers high-speed, low-latency internet to users all over the world. Essentially, with SpaceX's many, many satellites orbiting the Earth, they provide a blanket of internet access that can reach areas that couldn't previously be reached merely by cell phone towers. And if we're going to be even more technical, think about it this way. Most satellite internet service providers orbit the Earth 35,000 kilometers away from planet Earth. This means high latency, making streaming, online gaming, and other internet activities nearly impossible to load. But compare that with Starlink, their satellites are only 550 kilometers away, which are low orbit, much closer to Earth, making everything much faster. This means low latency, giving you faster, more reliable internet connection. And that brings us to our next question. How fast are the internet speeds with Starlink? Once you hear the prices of Starlink, you're gonna thank God that they offer some pretty darn fast internet speeds. The published rates for residential internet service promises download speeds of up to 200 megabits per second. We compare that to the country's average of only 32 megabits per second we can see that Starlink will probably be a major game changer in the Philippines. To put it into context, the internet here in the Philippines is slow and unreliable. Speaking as someone who lives in one of the newest and most up-to-date cities in the country, even I can attest. And so what more when you want to experience the provinces of the Philippines where sometimes it's in no man's land and you're in the middle of nowhere. Even if we compare the Philippines internet speeds to its neighboring Southeast Asian countries, it's a world of a difference. As mentioned, the Philippines' average internet speeds only top up at around 32 Mbps. Compare that to Singapore with internet speeds of 255 Mbps and Thailand's internet speeds of 225 Mbps, we're talking some of the highest broadband in the entire world in Southeast Asia. But now with the advancements of Starlink in the Philippines, this could give the Philippines a chance to experience global connectivity like some of these countries. But just like any other good thing, it comes at a price and a hefty one at that. Let's just say the average Filipino would not be able to afford this premium service created by Mr. Musk himself. After all, you don't become a billionaire by charging low prices. That said, those living in the Philippines may subscribe to Starlink for a monthly service of $54 per month. Or in pesos, we're talking roughly 2,700 pesos per month. However, that doesn't include you having to purchase Starlink's hardware itself, which is a one-time hardware fee of $600. Then, you also have the shipping and handling fee of $25, which also depends on your location. 
So all in all, just to get Starlink's router and satellite into your hands, this will cost you a one-time fee of $625. And yes, this is a one-time payment. And then you also have your reoccurring $54 monthly fee after your 30-day trial period, and then you will receive your 200 Mbps service of internet. And once again, this is Starlink's standard service. So if you want access to more gigabytes of internet, as well as the utilization for companies, then of course, that'll cost you much, much more. Now, onto the next topic at hand, how will Starlink affect the Philippines? I know for me personally, with running an online business, I need fast and reliable internet for things to be running smoothly. And so for you and I, investing in a service like Starlink might as well just be worth it. However, on the other hand, it's safe to say that the average Filipino cannot afford pricey services like this. Allow me to paint the picture for you. The average Filipino salary is 15,000 pesos per month or roughly $300 per month. And the one-time hardware fee of Starlink alone is already over double the average Filipino's wage at $600 per month. And that doesn't even take into consideration the $54 recurring monthly fee. For most Filipinos, that $54 monthly fee or 2,700 peso monthly fee is already a month's worth of grocery, it's schooling tuition, and in some cases, even rent. Now, just because most Filipinos can't afford Starlink doesn't mean it won't make a big, and I mean a huge, impact on the country. I mean, let's take it from Marcelo Santos, a farmer from the province of Quezon City. According to a Rappler article I was reading, Marcelo is a farm worker in the remote village of Caldong in Quezon province. You can imagine, with him living in a remote village, he would have a hard time back then getting internet access to chat anybody. But now, with the new installation of Starlink, he can now easily communicate with the head of an agribusiness firm he's working with, Candy Soto. From Manila, it would take Miss Soto four hours just to reach the seven hectare vegetable farm Marcelo's working in. But because Starlink can reach remote areas like this, Marcelo can easily chat the head of this agribusiness firm, Candy Soto, easily through Messenger. In return, Miss Soto can constantly get new updates and fresh data from Marcelo on the volume of vegetables produced, which this has drastically improved the distribution and sales of her produce all the while having less waste. Not only that, but due to the fast internet, Marcelo and his family can now watch online episodes of Capusomo, a public affairs TV show. It's safe to say that my man Marcelo has his priorities straight. But all jokes aside, this is just one use case where Starlink is reaching remote areas and already changing the flow of business for farm workers who need it, like Marcelo. And if there's any essential sector that needs rapid innovation for the Philippine economy, we all know it's agriculture. Now, other than agribusiness, yet another sector that Starlink will play a transformative role in here in the Philippines is in education. Despite the steep prices, many public schools here in the Philippines already find it invariably worth it for their students to be able to access the web while they're in remote areas. So not only will this be a game changer for public schools, but even for the future and next generation of young Filipino students. And this for sure was a non-negotiable use case for journalist then turned lawmaker Senator Lauren Lagarda. According to Rappler, Senator Lagarda backed the installation of Starlink in a public school within her home province, Antique, in Central Philippines. In the words of Senator Lagarda herself, she says, This is a huge step towards digital inclusivity for our Filipino students, ensuring that every learner has equal access to quality education regardless of their location. Through this, we are bridging the digital divide and empowering our students to thrive in a digital era. And I gotta be honest with you, Savvy XCast, after having read this, I was deeply touched by what Senator Lagarda is doing for the young kids in the Philippines. You know, when I go to the streets of Manila, or any province for that matter, it's honestly very heartbreaking to see how impoverished some of these families are. And as we're all well aware, education in the Philippines plays such a big role in getting a well-paying job here, and in most cases, it's the only ticket out of poverty for the large majority of families here. That's why I felt moved to create an initiative for Starlink to be installed in these remote schools that don't have access to internet. 
That's why iFloat moved to create an initiative to install Starlink in some of these remote schools that don't have access to internet. If you feel moved to support our cause and play a role in reforming and making education more accessible to the young kids in the Philippines, you may consider donating in the link down below. 100% of the proceeds of this initiative will go towards bridging the digital divide for these students, and I'll be giving you weekly updates on what we're doing to achieve this. I'll also be sure to release weekly financial statements of how much we've raised along with our expenditures. Back to the topic at hand, Senator Legata and her brother also installed Starlink Internet in Santa Ana National High School. Prior to the installation, this high school relied on 20 Mbps of internet speed with download speeds of only 6 Mbps. For those of you that are not very tech savvy, that's pretty slow. After Starlink's installations, download speeds jumped up to 217 Mbps and 324 Mbps of internet speed. And you can only imagine how big of a change this made for teachers and students to learn more efficiently. Now for the next question that we'll touch on, how exactly do you register for Starlink? Well, registration is fairly simple. First, you must go to Starlink's website and fill out the registration form with your contact information as well as your shipping address. Once you finish that, you'll then be asked to create a username and password for your account. After that, click the create account button to continue. On the next page, you'll then choose the right package for your needs. Starlink has a number of packages, both for residential and business users. As mentioned earlier, rate starts with a satellite kit of $600 one-time payment and also a $54 monthly fee. After you've chosen the right package for you, you'll then input your payment details. And once your payment has been processed, Starlink will then ship your satellite internet kit to the address that you provided. Shipping will approximately take only two to three weeks from your order, according to their website. And upon receiving the equipment, just follow the instructions provided to install your Starlink device. Once the installation is complete, users can then access Starlink's internet right away. So overall, the process is fairly simple. You just fill out your account details and it'll be shipped to you within two to three weeks. And by the way, Starlink also offers 24 seven customer support to help users with any questions and concerns that they may have. And so there you have it, Savvy Expats. That's a little bit about the recent launch of Starlink in the Philippines and the impact it's played on our countrymen, as well as the flow of business within only the first couple of months. Again, if you'd like to partner with me on making the internet more accessible to young Filipino students, as well as giving them the resources for a quality education, the link is down below. Any small donation would be greatly helpful and greatly appreciated. I must say, after living in the Philippines for over 40 years now, it's so clear to me how big of a role education plays on the lives of the people here and how their jobs will eventually fold out. You know, if you don't have a degree in the US, you can pick up a decent paying trade like construction or become an electrician as an alternative. But here in the Philippines, that's honestly not an option. Trades like those, which is high paying in the US, are some of the lowest paying jobs here in the Philippines. So attaining a quality education, like I mentioned earlier, is oftentimes the only ticket for the majority of families to climb out of poverty. Anyways, it was a pleasure Savvy Expats and I'll see you in the next video. God bless.